All right, welcome back to the Survive Scale Soar podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy, and this show comes in two formats, Real Talks, which is just me and the mic, talking about what's happening in the world and how it relates to your business, and Success Talks. And that's where I get to interview some of the top people in their respected industry, and they share with you, the audience, what has made them successful. And today is a Success Talk, and I'm honored to have an amazing guest on today, Megan Behan with Team on the Rise. Uh, she's a she's also a licensed broker, uh, brokered by EXP, and has her team Team on the Rise, which ser- services the greater Montgomery County area. How are you today, Megan? I'm doing pretty good. How are you today? Oh, doing great. I I've been waiting on this. This is we've talked about this for so long, and it's good to have you on the show because I think some of the things you're going to share today are going to help a lot of people that are listening to this episode, Uh, not just in real estate, but just small business in general. And I think, think some life lessons as well. I hope so. (laughs) Well, Megan, tell me a little bit about team on the rise. Who are y'all? Where do you serve? So we are um, a small, very nimble team. We service the Lake Conroe area and the surrounding counties. Um, We do a lot of business in the adjacent counties like San Jacinto, Grimes, Walker. Um, We're finding that more and more people are starting to push north, uh, wanting a little more elbow room and wanting a little bit more affordability. And so they're, they're, they're the people that are escaping the more crowded areas south of us. And we, we are just seeing it. it, It's growing year after year. Um, We're seeing more and more people. It's that that migration north, right? To, to the free land, right? More space. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. But share share a little bit before we jump into the real estate side. I mean, share a little bit about your life and um, how you kind of came up and how eventually you got into real estate. Well, I um, grew up in Florida and I played on the junior tennis circuit um, air, globally. I started obviously playing in Florida tennis. Um, Florida Juniors and then USTA Nationals and then internationally. Um, and I played on the um, the professional tour as an amateur prior to going to college. And then I played Division I college athletics for Duke University in North Carolina. Um, and after graduation, I decided um, 2001 was a challenging time to exit uh, college. You know, how the market cycles and it was a very challenging time to get a job. And so I ended up landing in the New Orleans area where my significant other at the time was number one for affordability because we could not afford Florida at that time. And I ended up taking a tennis teaching job as the head tennis pro at the Lawn Tennis Club, which is one of the oldest tennis clubs in the United States and had a really wonderful experience um, there for a few years. And then Hurricane Katrina booted us out of there in 2005. Mm-hmm. And so we had ju- literally just bought our home in August of 2005. We hadn't oh, wow. owned our home 30 days and the hurricane hit. And I remember sitting at my parents' house in Florida where we had evacuated to. And I looked at my, my husband, my then husband, um, and I said, where do we want to go? And we were like, okay, let's figure it out. And we ended up in Texas. His company um, ended up bringing all the displaced workers to the Houston branch. And we just kind of bounced around from one evacuation hotel to the next. And then during my uh, time off, if you will, <laughs> um, I found this little Lake Conroe and I said, there's a cute little house up on this Lake Conroe. Let's go check it out. And we drove up one afternoon and, you know, uh, I, it was literally at sunset. So we could not have set the, you know, the setting was beautiful. And the moment we pulled in the driveway, I said, this is, this is going to be my home. And it just, you know, we have not looked back. It's been, we've hit our stride and just gone from strength to strength um, since we relocated in 2006. Yeah, I've been up on Lake Conroe and those Conroe sunsets are amazing. It's it's spectacular. And I spent a couple years um, working as the head tennis pro at Bentwater. Um, and then 2007, end of 2007, I started thinking about making a change. I knew that, you know, being a tennis player had been my life and I was ready to start exploring 
other endeavors and I decided to pursue my real estate license in 2008. I got my license and yeah, another wonderful market cycle to enter 2008, you know, mortgage meltdown. But one of the clients that I worked with at Bentwater was actually a foreclosure broker. So he handled and specialized in the disposition of all, all the distressed assets in the Houston metro area. And so I cut my teeth at a time in the market when that was really what was going. And I spent a lot of time and I, I didn't work with a single normal transaction because we only represented the asset managers working with the banks. So, you know, I spent a lot of time just doing, you know, I'm learning BPOs from some of the brokers on the team, learning monthly status reports because that's what the asset managers were looking for, making calls, uh, fighting with uh, utility companies at that time, and you know having to do the you know the calls to the, for the cash for keys for tenants that they were paying their you know rent every month, but the landlord was not paying his mortgage. So you know I really learned um, a lot of what goes into that side of the industry. And I learned that it's not for everybody. It's a it's a rewarding side of the industry to the extent that if you've got really good systems in place, that it can be something very successful. But you have got to have very good systems because those banks have expectations. And, you know, that's you live and die by, you know, the strength of your team when you're doing the type of moving the type of assets and the amount of assets that we were doing. That's awesome. And before we jump into the next question, there was just a lot there we could yeah. we could spend a couple of hours unpacking yeah, yeah you know i i want to go back like you you made some changes like at probably some of the most unopportune times yeah. um yet I, I would think you would agree though that you coming in during those times or making those life changes at those times what did that do for you as a person you know, it, it really taught that you have a couple of choices when you are presented with something as catastrophic as a national disaster. You know, we saw and were surrounded by people that were just going through such horrendous things. And, and, and in those moments, you have a decision to make and a choice to make. And it's in the, the I guess, if you want it, for lack of a better word, those dark hours you know, those are where, those are the character building moments. And, you know, my husband and I, we had literally taken all of our savings and bought our home in New Orleans. So we had barely any money to rub together. We had, I guess you could say we had driven right around 10,000 miles because of all the evacuation that we had to do. And, you know, because it was a, it wasn't just an isolated disaster zone there. What you had to drive all the way around because there was no gas, there was no restaurants, there was no grocery stores. There was, it was, there was nothing available. We were getting MREs from the government, you know, at our once a week pickup stations in New Orleans. So when we went back to the parish, which is what they call counties there, you know, it was for many, many, many weeks and months, a disaster area. And, you know, it's it's those moments where you're really tested as a human that you, you and the choices that you make. And we really looked at it as an opportunity to seek out a better life. You know, we weren't native to New Orleans. And so we weren't tied there. We weren't entrenched in the culture. We appreciated the culture. We love Mardi Gras. We love Jazz Fest. We love everything that it has to offer. Um, but it really wasn't our home. And so, you know, and Texas wasn't even on the radar, I'll be honest, but landing in Texas afforded us so many more opportunities that we could never have even imagined, especially as a young 20 something couple. I mean, we saw commerce, we saw opportunity, we saw the ability to afford something that we thought we'd be in our 50s getting our lake home. And so, you know, we really took it as a prime opportunity to better our life. And I think that is really the distinct change in mindset that, you know, you have that choice in a moment of disaster. You choose either to rise or you crumble. And we chose to rise to the occasion and make a new choice and make a new life for ourselves. Yeah, that, that's awesome. I mean, we could we could end right here. And there's, I think if you just take that that alone, you know, that you have a choice. Yeah. And you have, you know, you came into the real estate industry at a not so good time, you know, 2008 to 2010, I could remember like 
the HAR, which is our, our board for the local real estate agents in Houston or greater Houston area, declined severely. Yeah. And a lot of people left and ran away from the business at that time. And you're like running towards it. And, yeah. uh, you know, what did, what did you learn going through that experience? It wasn't an easy experience, no. but it sounds like you learned a lot about yourself and how did that help you in your real estate business moving past that? You know, it, it's, it's what I try to coach my new agents to is that it's not in the, the easy times that you learn what you're capable of. It's in the challenging times because it really, you have to do the work of, you know, real estate. You have to develop the systems and the consistency and, and really learn to hone your skills. And if you have bad habits, they get revealed in that. So I started in a moment where the, it was a completely imploded industry, essentially. And so, you know, I will be honest, the first few years, I did very few normal transactions when I was with the foreclosure broker. I didn't do, uh, I didn't represent buyers and sellers. I represented banks. So I was very fortunate in that sense that I had income coming in for those first few years, but it really wasn't until about 2011 or 2012 that I started to do the real work of real estate. But I had by that point kind of established my systems and learning from another broker that you've got to have a very fine tuned process in order to be successful because it's not, you can ride the roller coaster like a lot of agents do. Um, but for me, it, 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 I didn't really see that, you know, consistent um, income and volume until about, 20, I'll be honest, till about 2014. Yeah. Yeah. And it was in that time you're developing your skills, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, all through that time, you know, and thank goodness that I had other income. I was I was working a side job. I was still teaching. I was still teaching tennis actively to a lot of young junior girls that were, you know, getting ready to launch their um, junior circuit uh, careers. And so, you know, I was very fortunate. But I think that that's also a key thing is that, you know, don't be afraid to have, a, a, you know, another income, per, you know, that you're able to help keep yourself afloat and still do the business of real estate and still actively be engaged in the business of real estate, because guess what? Markets don't stay that way. We I've watched a couple of different market cycles. They go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, and they all have opportunities in them. And it's a matter of really adapting yourself and being able to pivot and recognize those opportunities. That's, that's great stuff. So, you know, somebody who's listening today, I think a lot of people that aren't in real estate or they do get into real estate, they base base their desire to become a real estate agent by watching like t- these TV shows. But, you know, let's go look at three homes and you pick one and, you know, it's it's easy there. You know, the people move in, they're all happy. Like, what is what is it like in the day of a real estate agent? Well, I will tell you right now that that is not reality. Reality TV is far from reality. Um, uh, But I will tell you that, you know, any sales job, any sales in any industry is going to have its challenges. But, you know, I believe that and I know from talking to other very successful realtors that have are either indie brokers or with other brokerages um, that are brokers themselves, you know, it's a successful realtor has a good blend of having tenacity self-motivation, hustle, they're highly adaptable, they have a strong willingness to continue their own personal development, and they have the capability of pivoting, recognizing when it's time to pivot, because all markets shift. That's part of being in sales and part of you know being in the world that we live in. Um, we can't control the big market conditions, but we can control the actions that we do when we're facing those different conditions. Yeah, absolutely. I had a great conversation with somebody earlier that's that's stepping into coaching with me. And yeah, you know, one of his questions was like, you know, I need to, or what a question really is more of a statement is, you know, I need to kind of learn some of the new stuff that I need to be doing in, in order to be successful in this market. And I was like, sometimes it doesn't have to necessarily be the new stuff. It's oh, just cool. doing this. Yeah. It's just doing the stuff that's always worked and you're, you might not be doing. So um, it's, it's about having that persistence, that consistency in the business um, and, and activities and uh, being intentional in. So that's all really good stuff that, that you shared there. What, what is, would you say would be your number one lead source? You know, people always say, well, what do you, what do you do to get leads? And I was like, there's a, there's a hundred different ways. You know, which one are you going to commit to? 
Uh, what's one of your main lead sources? You know, I would say that it's been a good blend. You know, I think that you have to have multiple streams of lead generation sources coming in and how you handle them is still consistently the same across the board. And, and it's the, what you focus your energy on will obviously flourish the most but it's still the same principle across the board, whether it's your sphere, whether it's Zillow, whether it's online leads, uh, Redfin, you name it. Um, but I have found that the last couple of years, it's been a good blend of some different online uh, sources that have provided us lead, but primarily the sphere, of income, our sphere, because those are the people that really know you. Those, at the end of the day, real estate is still a relationship business. I don't care how many you know, you know, companies come in and try to say, oh, we're the next big thing and we've got a new way to do it. It's hyper local. It's and it, it really comes down to the relationships that you foster and nurture and cultivate over the years. Uh, absolutely. It's it's one of those businesses where they have to trust you. I mean, it's their biggest asset typically that yeah. you're helping them move and uh, they want to trust the person that they hire to, to either sell the home or buy the home. Yeah, and it's not some online person, you know, somewhere far away that's going to get the job done. It's going to be someone who's in the trenches living locally with local knowledge on the pulse of what's going on in the community that can really help them to make an informed decision. Absolutely. What do you think is the biggest challenge you've faced since being a real estate agent? Oh man, there's so many, but I would actually say I'm going through that right now. You know, I, the last few years, it's, it's been incredible as a, as a realtor. And I think that's been, you know, almost one of the things that we have, have to say as a cautionary tale, don't, don't base your, you know, expectations of how things are going to unfold when the market is on a high or on the way up, because the reality is it, 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 it can be, you know, you have to be willing and able to pivot just like I coach my, my team, you know, when times get tough, you have to start really looking at what is bringing in, what are income producing activities and what are things that you need to start shedding and shed them quickly. And I think that that is, it's an important thing to focus. Where are you spending your money? Because perhaps you really need to take what you were spending somewhere else and focus on your sphere on the things that are actually bringing you business. And, and it's it really that adaptability. And with my, right now, I'm having to look at the expenses that I've had the last few years because I had so much money coming in and, and really starting to, you know, with a fine tooth comb, go through and, you know, look at my profit and loss and determine what is unnecessary. I've already started doing a lot of cutting because it just, when the market shifts, you've also got to be ready to shift and, and still stay profitable and still stay, you know, actively engaged in the business of real estate. So when the market does go back the other direction, that you're ready to take off with it. Yeah, I think, you know, when when times are good and the money is coming in, it's easier to buy tools and, you know, all these things that kind of come along. Shiny objects. The, the shiny objects, <laughs> the, the things are reoccurring month to month and and then when the market changes, you kind of go back and look. And I, I had this the other day I was at Zoom webinar. I, I haven't used Zoom webinar in two years yet. I've been paying for it. And um, so, you know, I saved myself a thousand bucks. I just yep. I, I don't use it anymore. So yep. I, I think it is key in any type of market, even when things are good, to go back and just occasionally look back and say, OK, is that really giving me the return on investment that I thought it was going to bring? Bingo, 100%. What has been one of the biggest wins in your business? You know, I when I think about it over the years, it's really been taking that step to launching my own team. You know, having the courage to not get complacent and 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 stay with in the safety of the organization of where I was because of you know the glamour of it um, and the you know reputation where I was at, and so I. I, it took a lot of courage to step off of that ledge, if you will, and fly on my own again, because you get very comfortable with all of the resources that are brought to the table. And then you have to then look at how do I recreate that? How do I rebuild those systems for myself? And it takes a lot of courage to, you know, take make that first step. But boy, is it worth it. <laughs> uh, it's 
Yeah, you're building you're building something for yourself, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. What do you what do you think? You know, the market's always a, a question that I get. You know, how's the market? And I coach my agents to always say it's great because it is great in one aspect or another. Um, you know, we look at the news today, we see all the stuff that's going on, interest rates are climbing, you know, sales prices also exploded over the last few years. But what are the opportunities today for buyers and sellers? You know, one of the things having ridden through several market cycles, there are certainly going to be challenges in today's market, but it's as an experienced agent. And one of the things that I talk with my team members about is that it's our job to stay plugged in to knowing what's going on in our market. What's happening in California and what's happening in New York and Florida has very, very small bearing on what's happening here other than to know what's going on over there because it's just a completely different market. And so, you know, you really have to stay kind of focused on what's happening here and realizing that we don't really go super high up. I mean, yes, we did see some of those crazy bidding wars last year, but we didn't see, you know, like Austin did the three or 400,000 over asking price. So we really aren't experiencing the corrections that we're seeing in other markets. And so, you know, we have to educate the consumer to not have that sky is falling because the news is out there to sell the news. There's, you know, sensational news is what what people want to hear. They don't want to hear that, oh, it's going great. Everything's, ha- you know, no problems. That wouldn't sell. So, you know, it, it's important to, you know, really engage with your network and find out what builders are doing, what kind of incentives, what kind of lenders they're connected with, what are the lenders offering, because there's quite a few lenders in our area that are the, working with big builders that buy down packages of rates to help keep the affordability factor. And so you might have to consider new construction for the time being. If you have to be in a home right now, you might have to um, reset your expectations, you know, maybe have a stepping stone game plan. And so as a realtor, you, it's our job and as, a, as an agent to, to help educate the consumer that here's a good strategy for you. Um, while your dream home might be X, it might have to be the next step. And so, you know, there, and investors at this time are finally able to jump back into the market. You know, last year, my investors were like, I'm out. You know, I, I'm not going to be able to compete with a lot of primary buyers on the retail market. And so now we're starting to see investors starting to creep back in because there is a lot of opportunity that is coming to the table. So, you know, no matter what market we're, we're facing, um, we, it is our, you know, fiduciary duty to make sure we are informed enough to help our consumers and our buyers and sellers um, to, to make some of the, the important decisions. And part of that is, is knowing what's going on in our local market. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Like you could go five miles away from here and the market's completely different. And, Correct. you know, it could be a different market within a particular price point. And yeah. so ha- hiring that local agent that has that knowledge is critical because if you're trying to get that information from Twitter or mm-hmm. any of the social medias or from the, the national news media, you you know, you would think it's your chicken little and the, and the sky's falling. Right. And that's that's not necessarily the case. There's creative finances, financing. Right. There's ne- negotiate getting sellers to negotiate or negotiating with the sellers to buy down points. Yeah. And um, there, there are other loan programs out there available for very responsible, um, you know, buyers that have their financial house in order. There's great programs for investing that doesn't, you know, require them to get, you know, involved with a lot of high interest rates. And and so, you know, partnering with an agent that is able to help the, the you know, the client find some of these alternative ideas, that that's really our responsibility. And you know, I, I also think competency in your market is a huge deal. I, I want my agents to know their market, not just, you know, try to help somebody and they know nothing about the local area. It's a huge disservice. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why we have a referral network, you know, that we rely on those agents to help guide, you know, our mutual clients to a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's great information right there. Go with somebody local with somebody that has the knowledge. Um, so someone's listening today, maybe they're a small business owner. So 
So real estate, maybe not real estate. Um, what is one piece of it, business advice that you'd like to leave our listener today? I would say choose wisely who you surround yourself with. And, you know, as you continue to develop, um, you know, that may change over time. You know, that they, they everybody knows that the five people you choose to surround yourself with, you know, are as a reflection of, you know, where you're at. And, and I think that the other side of it is also don't be afraid of failure, you know, embrace failure because it's oftentimes the most incredible nuggets of knowledge and learning opportunities get revealed to you in some of your darkest moments. And, you know, we can't be afraid of, of having those, you know, learning opportunities come at us. And, and sometimes people get, you know, so focused on, oh, I got to have success, success, success. And, and the reality is, is sometimes your losses teach you more than any of your wins could ever teach you. I 100% agree. I, I, I tell people, if you're not failing, you're not learning anything. You're, you're not going to get very far. Yeah. Awesome. Um, all right. So you gave a piece of, of business advice. What about life advice? Just everything you've experienced in your life, even up till today, the Hurricane Katrina, the moving around, the coming into the market at a, at a tough time. Like what, what piece of life advice would you give? Protect your mindset protect your well-being, you know, have the systems in your business, time block those important appointments for self-care, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to the people around you. You know, I am the first person to acknowledge that I am a, you know, one of the people that very reluctant to go out and ask for help. And because I am like, I got to figure this out myself, but I have learned in my many years of being in this business that sometimes you know, what you may be struggling to figure out, someone else has already gone through or they're in the same situation, but they have a different approach to it. And so, you know, one of the things that um, in one of the um, mastermind groups that I've been involved in, they said that no success in the world can compensate for failure in the home. And it's so true. You know, if you're sacrificing everything at the altar of success for your career, it's not a sustainable business model. It really isn't. And so I, I coach my girls on my team that, you know, no one gets to the end and says, gosh, I wish I worked more. You know, they get to the end and say, I wish I had spent more time with my loved ones and doing the things that I, bring me joy. And so I, I would say that, you know, as realtors, we, we have a tendency because we don't have a set schedule. It's not a normal nine to five really be protective of your time off and, and your time with your family and, and protect your well-being. I think that is really what will help you sustain in the long run a career in real estate. That's great advice. That's great advice. Megan, you've dropped a lot of knowledge today that I know people that are listening in, uh, they're going to get some things that are going to make some changes in their life in, in a big way. Um, so much there. And I'm going to go back and listen to it again, because there were some things that I caught that I was like, oh, that's really, really good. So I thank you for taking the time today. Um, how can people connect with you and your team? Um, you can find us on Instagram at Team on the Rise or Facebook at Discover Montgomery County. And in the coming months, we're rolling out a brand new website, teamontherise.com. So keep an eye out for that as well. Great. Uh, make sure you go there and visit and follow follow them on social media. They have great posts. It's not all about real estate, too. It's also a bunch of activities that are going on in that area. If you haven't been out to Lake Conroe or anywhere in Montgomery County, uh, lots of great food, lots of great music, all sorts of good things. So make sure you connect with a Megan and her team so you know what's going on out there. Megan, thank you again uh, for taking the time out today. And it was an honor to be able to talk with you. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Until next time, onward and upward.